Hey guys, did you ever want to try something that is just distinctively Florida? Or what about the taste of Florida, like the true essence of Florida in a drink? Then you need to try black coral rum. It's like capturing the sunshine state in a glass. But black coral rum just isn't any rum. It's not your average rum. It's actually a celebration of Florida's vibrant culture and history. So with each sip, you're going to be transported back to orange groves, swaying palm trees, and it's going to be as smooth as the sand beneath your feet, whether you're drinking the white rum, the spiced rum, or the black rum. But what really makes this rum special? That's the dedication of the locals who craft it. It's made by those who share a deep love of Florida and only use in Florida ingredients. So if you're looking for something that is distinctly Florida, then look no further than black coral rum. Where do you find black coral rum, you ask? You're going to find it at their distillery in West Palm Beach. Their distillery is Steel Thai Spirits. Can't make it to West Palm? That's okay. Check out their website, steeltiespirits.com. And trust me, you're going to sip on this and you're going to think nothing but Florida. guys welcome to that florida feeling i hope everybody's having a good week happy good friday i never know if you're supposed to say happy good friday or good good friday but it's it's good friday so easter is upon us spring is here and baseball season has started sorry i i love baseball if you've listened to the podcast long enough you've heard me talk about it and you know i went to spring training um yeah so i'm excited about baseball um but yeah Hope everybody's had a great week. Um, If you're off today, I hope you're doing something fun or productive or nothing, if that's what you really need to do for your mental health. But I hope you enjoyed last week's episode. I do want to give a shout out to everybody who has participated in the Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. By the way, I did not realize that the YouTube short of the Cybertruck would blow up like that. So thank you. Uh, like 5,000 views. Was not expecting that. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Also, the manatee video blew up, so thank you. You guys are just amazing. I also want to give a shout out to all of my fellow podcasters at Unfiltered Studios. Um, if you have not checked out Unfiltered Studios, definitely head over to uh, check them out. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram. There is an amazing group of podcasters on that page. That's the studio I'm part of. And you can literally find something for anybody and everybody. Um, uh, They are just an amazing group of people. You can find everything from Stupid History Minute that is literally a minute to, you know, some motivations to movies to history, just awesome sports. Just really go check it out if you're looking for some new podcast or just something to add to your collection of shows that you listen to each week. But definitely go check out Unfiltered Studios. So today, guys, I want to talk about uh, something that I didn't realize was so dire in Florida. Um, I want to talk about a Florida native who, let's face it, at this point probably isn't a fan of tourists, snowbirds, developers, or anything that is really screwing up Florida right now. Um, And that's because every one of these groups is helping to make their habitat disappear. I'm talking about the Florida panther. No, not the hockey team, although the hockey team is doing good. Uh, They made it to the playoffs. Congrats. Go Panthers. But the real Florida Panthers, the endangered ones, the ones that we may not see many of anymore. You know, this may be the time in my lifetime where I actually see an animal go extinct. Um, And that's really sad. Um, And I'm sure you've heard of them, the Florida Panthers. They are the animals that roam South Florida, although sometimes they make their way further north. I did just post a really cool video on Instagram of the guy turkey hunting because it is turkey season and one just walked up on him. Really cool moment. Scary moment. Although I would be the person to pss, pss, the murder kitty and I would die petting the murder kitty. Um, but for him to actually see one in the wild is amazing because there's not that many of them left. Um, they are known as the Florida Panther, the Florida Cougar. No, not the one from the villages. They have nothing to do with loofahs. Um, You might also hear him as the Florida Puma. 
The Florida panther is a North American cougar population in South Florida that lives in the Pinelands, tropical hammocks, also in a mixed freshwater swamp forest. Uh, they do have a very unique habitat, and they go through different habitats depending on what they're doing. Like during the day, they live in one. At night, they prefer to bed down another. They breed in another depending on where they need to keep their den for their babies. And South Florida, you know, has a perfect habitat for these animals, but unfortunately, these habitats are going away, and this is kind of a serious problem. Panthers are rather large cats. Uh, males can weigh up to 160 pounds, and they do live in a few different areas of South Florida. You can find them mainly in Collier, Hendry, Lee, Miami-Dade, and Monroe counties, although, again, some tend to wander further north. They are the only confirmed cougar population in the eastern United States. So that would be this side of the Mississippi. And they currently occupy 5% of its historic range, which means that they used to have a larger area and it is dwindling fast. The panther has been close to the brink of extinction as there was only about 20, 20, 20, 20 in the 1970s. Now it's up a little higher than that, uh, but it's still not in a good state. The panther is officially the Florida state animal. Of course, there is also a hockey team named after it. Uh, you can also get a license plate uh, to support research for the Florida panthers. Florida takes these animals very seriously as it is our, our murder kitty. Florida panthers, uh, have you, if you've ever seen a Florida panther kitten, they're freaking adorable. I'll post a picture. Uh, Florida panthers are spotted at birth. They have blue eyes, uh, much like most kittens. And as they grow, they, they kind of fade from their spots. They become just a straight tan color with yellowish eyes. They have a creamy white underbelly with black tips on its tail and ears. The thing that really sets the panther apart from other big cats is that it does not roar. Um, it does not roar at all. Instead, it whistles, chirps, growls, hisses, and purrs. Um, it's almost like that video, the viral video of the cheetah, the cheetah that kind of purrs and chirps like a house cat. The Florida Panthers kind of the same. Um, they do scream though; they can scream, but they don't. They don't roar. They just make loud noises. They can still scare you. The Florida Panther is smaller than other panthers from colder climates, um, but larger panthers than if you found them in a true jungle setting. So, because of the climate range they're in, they're kind of like a medium-sized panther. You know, because Florida's got to do its own thing. Adult panthers usually weigh between 64 and 100 pounds. The males usually weigh between 100 and 160. They usually range from 5.9 feet to 7.2 feet in length and stand about 24 to 28 inches high at their shoulder. Um, so they're still a large cat. You know, you still wouldn't want to run up on one of these. The Florida panther is a distinct subspecies of a cougar. And it has been set apart as a unique cougar subspecies even back since 1899. A genetic study of cougar DNA showed that many of the purported cougar subspecies described in the 19th century are to be similar to the Florida panther and are recognized as distinct. It is set apart as a subspecies. They, are, they have, though, been reclassified as a North American cougar. Despite these findings... The Florida panther, though, has still remained a distinct subspecies. So while it has been reclassified as a true North American cougar, because it is in North America, it will still remain a distinct subspecies because it only is in Florida. So again, only in Florida. Uh, Florida panthers have their own little subspecies. Panthers are mainly carnivorous. Uh, their diet consists mostly of small animals such as raccoons, armadillos, hares, mice, and waterfowl. Now, they will go for bigger prey, such as deer, storks, feral pigs, and small alligators. They usually are opportunistic hunters. Um, they have been known to prey on livestock and domesticated animals, such as cows, goats, horse, sheep, dogs, and cats. Um, you know, so basically, if it's there, they're going to take it. Um, and I think that's also part of the problem with people encroaching on their habitat is that there have been more attacks on people's pets because, well, don't let your pet roam. If it's your pet and you care for it, take care of it and don't let it get attacked by an animal. Sorry, I had to. 
Florida panthers have now said to be the main cause of death to white-tailed deer in South Florida, uh, which is actually encouraging for the endangered panther population because it means that they are growing, they're getting stronger, and they're eating. Not so good for deer hunters. Panther kittens are usually born in dens they are created by their, that are created by their mothers, and they're usually made up of dense scrub, which is why this habitat is so important. Dens are often uh, chosen based on certain factors, such as prey nearby, water, and safety to the den. Kittens tend to spend their first six to eight weeks of life in the den solely dependent on their mother. So think of a normal cat and kitten. Uh, they're going to get fed by the mom, cleaned by the mom. Uh, everything is solely dependent on their mother. The first uh, two to three weeks, they're going to get solely nursed by the mom. And after that, she's going to wean them and then she's going to hunt for them. They're going to start on a food, like a solid food diet. Uh, eventually, about eight weeks to ten weeks, they're going to start to hunt with their mom. Uh, it's really cute. You'll see them walking behind her. Uh, male panthers don't really come around at this time as male and female panthers don't stick to each other unless they're breeding. Panthers are usually solitary animals. Um, so... One panther, one area. Uh, kittens are usually around two months old when they really start to hunt on their own. And they are about two years old when they finally leave the nest. So that's what, 14 in kitten in cat years. So, eh, be a teenager, go on your own. Unfortunately, panthers face many threats to their lives. Um, the biggest threat, though, sadly, is from us humans. Humans threaten the panther population through many different types of ways. Uh, poaching, unfortunately, is a big one. Uh, wildlife control measures is another. And we don't only threaten the panther population through these ways, but also through habitat fragmentation, um, which is basically a nice way of saying that we're taking away their habitat because we're building roads, buildings, infrastructure, and we're taking it from them by... So this area is a panther habitat. We're going to build a road through it. And then we're going to leave the other area next to it, a panther habitat, and now they have to cross a road. And we all know what happens when animals cross a road. They get hit by cars. Um, things happen. And so this causes an already more endangered animal to become even more endangered. And the population is reduced now to such a small area in Florida. And I mean, super small. I mean, when you look at the map from like 19... I mean, in 1920 is when the land boom happened. They had a massive area, of course, because people were just sticking to the coast. And now as they're building in, that area is becoming tiny almost to the point of it's the Everglades. Because pretty much everybody knows you don't build in the Everglades. Good luck. It's not going to happen. Um, but there, as a result of this, this population has had to go inland. And this is actually becoming a problem because it's causing inbreeding. And this is why the population has gotten so small, and this is also why panthers are now having genetic trait issues. Um, they have kinked tails, neurological issues, heart problems, sperm problems. Uh, they're actually becoming smaller. They're becoming less athletic. So the fact that we are taking their habitat is a huge issue just on their population alone. The two highest causes of mortality for individual, like for Florida panthers alone, are automobile collisions and territorial aggression between Florida panthers. Okay, territorial aggression is on them. Like, we can't stop them from fighting. But the automobile collisions, that's where I was talking about the fragmentation. You build a road, they're going to cross it to try to breed. Boom, they get hit. Now, of course, as soon as a panther's hit, it's endangered, so obviously a person should call, you know, if the panther's not dead. Uh, and get help for it from the wildlife rescue. Um, panthers that are injured are often usually taken to the White Oak Conservation in Yulee for recovery and rehabilitation until they can be reintroduced, if they can be reintroduced. Um, back in 2011, an orphan brother and sister were actually brought in at five months old after their mother was killed in Collier County. The kittens were raised uh, with being hands-off, which means that they were for the most part, let the, given the opportunity to be cats. And then they were eventually reintroduced into the Rottenberger Wildlife Management Area in Collier County, which allowed them to be reintroduced into the population and allowed the population to continue on its natural path. Primary threats to the panther population, though, on, like, as a whole include habitat loss, habitat degradation, and fragmentation. I mean... We all know that South Florida is developing at a super fast rate, and there are many areas that are actually extremely controversial due to this 
because they are prime habitats for panthers, especially for their breeding grounds and dens. One of these locations actually is Ave Maria near Naples. Um, this is one such development because it's in their habitat. Panthers are frequently spotted in the area. Panthers are actually hit by cars a lot in this area. And, you know, it was built on a prime breeding ground for panthers. Um, somehow it got pushed through. We all know that, you know, money greased palms and things happened. And unfortunately, this is not good for the panthers. Another thing is ha habit, ugh, habitat fragmentation. Uh, this is where I talked about roads cutting through habitats, effectively cutting off panthers from one another. Males are actually the, usually the ones that are hit by cars as they will cross a road, don't care, whereas females are more leery to cross a road. Um, but this is still an issue because now it's going to prevent breeding. Uh, so it's going to prevent panthers from continuing to breed. It's going to stop the population growth. Um, that's an issue on its own. And of course, there are some natural issues that panthers have to deal with that cause problems to the population. Disease is one that actually uh, is a problem. They are susceptible to FIV or feline immunodeficiency virus, which is something that normal house cats can get. Um, if you've ever been to an adoption event, you see that some cats are FIV positive. And that's not a bad thing. It doesn't cause n instant death. It just means it takes them a little bit longer to heal or they can get sick faster. But it is a problem for the fact that it's a genetic issue. And it also will not let them live as long or if they are wounded, they can die quicker. Um and of course, the presence of these viruses is probably related to the mating behaviors and territorial issues, the fact that they are inbred at this point. Florida panthers have also been observed having the feline leukemia virus, uh, which is fatal, absolutely fatal in panthers, just like it is in house cats. Um, and that's the FELV. Uh, they are trying to work on that as well. There's people working on through these to try to see what they can do to get... Um, the help for the panthers, but of course, nat nature has to run its course. You cannot obviously go out and immunize every panther that you see. Also, good luck with that. Now, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission has actually recently identified at least eight endangered panthers with the neurological disorders. Um, I know that there's been trail cam video of panthers walking around kind of shaking or having a head tilt. And they're not sure if these are from viruses or from the genetics due to inbreeding. Um, and they're trying to learn more about these issues in these animals. And because it's eight, it doesn't sound like a lot. But because the population is only sitting at about 240, that is starting to be kind of a high percentage. Environmental chemicals, surprisingly, is also a threat to panthers. Um, and you're like, well, how do they get in chemicals? Well, you know, you spray fertilizer they walk around, that's a chemical. And these environmental chemicals are actually causing reproductive issues. Uh, male that have been exposed to chemicals that uh, have estradiol in them are actually causing them to be kind of feminized, which means that they are less likely to reproduce as they are less likely to produce the correct kind of sperm. You know, and they need to reproduce for safety for the species. Um, it's already a low count and high levels of inbreeding, which means the fact that they're not going to reproduce just causes even more issues. Um, they believe that herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, those are really to blame. And, you know, of course, panthers running, running around across Florida uh, through the Everglades. Of course, north of the Everglades, you have a lot of uh, farms, things like that. Um, there is a rare case, though. A female panther also died of mercury poisoning in the Everglades years ago, a few years ago. Um, nobody ever really, there's not, I tried to look up how. They don't really know how that happened. Uh, genetic depletion is also a massive problem due to the low numbers of the species. Habitat destruction has caused uh, problems of, uh, for the panthers because it isolates them. And then isolated groups kind of just breed with one another, causing inbreeding. And in inbreeding leads to bad traits, lower fitness abilities, and overall health issues. Um, the genetics are actually so bad that 88% of Florida panthers have kinked tails. Uh, so that's most of them now at this point. And, you know, the... Wildlife people saw this, scientists saw this, and they knew that they had to do something. So they actually introduced eight Texas pumas into the Florida panther habitat because these are closely related animals. And they were trying to help the population to bring more genetic uh, variation into the population 
to help it thrive. Actually did thrive. They've had hybrid kittens so far, and these kittens actually have a better survival rate than either the Puma from Texas or the Panther from Florida kittens alone. So uh, this genetic variation is actually helping the breed survive, but unfortunately they're still facing these problems that we've talked about so far. It is still a fragile population, but there is hope. The Florida Panther was officially listed under the Endangered Species Preservation Act in 1966 and has continued to be protected under the Endangered Species Act of 1973. Florida continues to help protect the fragile species and conserve the remaining population, which does sit around 240. And of course, the task isn't easy since they have to... The ideal certain size habitat... Um, is to have so many panthers per habitat to have a population growth. Considering that panthers are considered a conservational flagship because of the contributor to a keystone ecological and evolutionary process in their environment, which means that, first of all, it's an animal that's needed for population control. Secondly, they are needed for the environment for other reasons. So, theoretically, we have a population of 240 panthers. So that should require a habitat of eight to 12,000 square miles for sufficient genetic diversity to avoid inbreeding so that that allows them to have the ability to roam, to have dens, to hunt, to breed, and to be panthers. 8,000 to 12,000 square miles, right? The problem is, is of the mid-2000s, so that's 15 years ago, they had 3,800 square miles. 3,800. So as of 15 years ago, they had barely over a fourth of what they were supposed to have. We all know that is shrunk because Florida is one of the fastest growing states. So a population of 240 is supposed to have eight to 12,000 square miles. And they have maybe at this point, 3,000. This is a problem. This is a massive problem. There's a reason that these panthers are inbred and going extinct. And this is serious. And I, I don't like this. You know, like, these are really amazing creatures. It's really cool that Florida has its own murder kitty. You know, something to actually fight Florida man. And we're letting them just go away. It's kind of sad. Now, Florida Panthers, though, are thought to be like Florida Man at times uh, because they have found to cause troubles outside of Florida. Yep, just like Florida Man. Uh, the wandering male panthers have been found as far, no far north as the Okefenokee Swamp in Georgia. Unfortunately, they didn't know what it was and they shot and killed it. Um, a man was also fined, given two years promotion, and had a lifetime hunting ban after he killed a Florida Panther that made its way all the way up to Troop County, Georgia which is the Georgia-Alabama border, and it sits between Atlanta and Columbus. Um, so you're talking pretty far north. So panthers can wander pretty far away, probably in search of a habitat, probably in search of a mate. Um, habitat conservation is genuinely important for these panthers as they rely on this protection. They rely on protection of forest, as they mainly live in hardwood hammock, cypress swamps, pine land, and hardwood swamps. You will commonly find them in, you know, the areas that people can no longer develop. So, Big Cypress National Preserve, Everglade National Preserve, the Florida Panther National Wildlife Refuge, and the Picayune Strand State Forest. You're also going to see them in rural South Florida. But, of course, the problem is, is you can't put a fence around them and keep them in. Panthers that are tracked by GPS, have been observed moving from the wetlands during the day to the prairie grasslands at night, which is why we have to re preserve all kinds of habitats for them. You must, con you must have conservation of both places of these habitats to fully save the panther. You know, it's like, it's like humans. You know, we don't just have one kind of place. We use different kinds of places to get through our day. It's the same thing with these animals. The management of the panther habitat has had controversy, though, especially with a lot of building lately. Um, actually, in the past, a leading Florida panther expert, David Mayer, was paid by developers to produce faulty scientific papers that were actually allowed to use, that were used to allow the destruction of panther habitats. Of course, this didn't make sense to people, 
especially uh, conservationist study was called into question and found to be faulty, but that didn't stop developers in time. They were able to destroy forest that was viable breeding ground for panthers. David Mayer was discredited and uh, basically kicked out of Florida. Now, panthers aren't usually known to interact with humans. Um, they do say, though, if you encounter one, the correct thing to do is not to run, but stand and face the animals. Um, in fact, don't run. Panthers can actually run 35 miles per hour. Running is your worst option. Do not run. Make eye contact. Look big. And do not, under any circumstances, go pss, pss, pss. Do not pet the murder kitty. I mean, I'm going to try to pet the murder kitty. I'm not going to lie to you. I am absolutely going to pss, pss it. And then if it walks up to me, I'm going to freak out. You know, I'm going to be like, oh, God, what do I do? But, you know, like, that's just me. You got to do it once. You know, you only live once. But, uh, yeah, if you ever actually do come in contact with a Florida Panther, make eye contact, stay still, stand and face it, don't run, don't, just don't try and pet it, uh, let it do its thing. Um, Florida Panthers are actually, though, known to avoid confrontation. And surprisingly, there has never been a reported panther attack in Florida. Um, of course, people in western states have been attacked by pumas. Just in fact, this last week, there was unfortunately uh, two brothers who were attacked by a puma and one was killed. Um, sad sad for, his fam for their family. Um, people, though, also have successfully fought them off with sticks and rocks in their bare hands. But if you do rarely encounter one, stand and face it and let it do its thing. Panthers are a symbol in Florida. You know, we have the hockey team. The post office has put out a panther stamp for endangered, endangered species sets. And Zoo Tampa has an amazing facility uh, for, these, for these amazing animals. Uh, they actually have a really cool rehabilitation for the Florida panthers. They actually have three panthers that call the zoo home due to their permanent injuries. Um, and they're really gorgeous animals up close. If you go to Zoo Tampa, you can see these animals. You can also get a Florida license plate that goes towards the Protect the Panther research here in Florida. Um, and that goes a long way since panthers can live between 15 and 20 years in the wild. You know, these are amazing animals, and we need to continue to make sure that they do have a place in the Sunshine State. They have a place along with beaches and tourists and snowbirds and even Florida Man. Uh, today's Florida Man comes to us from Davie, Florida, so sticking to South Florida. A 50-year-old man was mauled by a captive black leopard in a backyard animal enclosure in South Florida. All right, here I fear we're, you know, like, you know, s survival of the fittest, smart people. Uh, he paid $150 for a full contact experience with the black leopard. He was supposed to be able to pay to pay and play with the leopard to get a picture taken and rub its belly. Okay, um, if you have a cat, because I have three, you're lucky on a good day if you can rub a house, a house cat's belly. What makes you think you're ever going to get to rub a black leopard's belly? Like, really? Unless it's sedated, how do you think you're even going to get to touch it, let alone rub its belly? Like, what the hell, man? Really? Like, are you, you... I mean, yes, obviously you were dumb enough to pay for this, so yes, you must be that stupid. Um, the man actually was suing the owner of the leopard after he was mauled during the encounter. I don't think any of us are surprised he got mauled. The leopard actually attacked the man as soon as he entered, the encounter and ripped off his ear and his scalp was said to be hanging off his head. And this man thought he was going to pet its belly. This man is lucky to be alive. Thanks for listening today, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning about Florida's own murder kitty and have a new appreciation for it. And, you know, we need to conserve and promote, you know, we need to... Yes, Florida's a great place to live, don't get me wrong, but uh, we really need to save... We need to save the Panthers, guys. We really need to save those murder kitties. Don't forget to check out the social media pages. Don't forget to look up Unfiltered Studios to see if there's another podcast out there for you. Don't forget to wear your sunscreen, drink your water. I do have a podcast trailer on here today from Florida Men for Florida Man, another great podcast that actually helped me get started. They have been an amazing group of people who have helped me get through the podcast. Uh, they have helped me get started. They have been supportive they have given me advice, so you're going to hear from them in just a second. Uh, check them out as well. And always, guys, 
That's your daily dose of sunshine. This podcast is a production of Unfiltered Studios. If you would like to know more about joining Unfiltered Studios, please visit our website at unfpod.com for more information. If you like small town mystery, crazy news, and wild history, then the Florida Men on Florida Man podcast is for you. Each week, Josh Mills and Wayne McCarty bring you the absolute best Florida has to offer. So if you're looking for a show that's safe for the family, but funny enough to help you escape everyday life, then listen to the Florida Men on Florida Man podcast. That's Florida Men, plural, on Florida Man podcast.